people often don't like when you compare a current day fighter to an all time great. They can get very touchy about it. And to some extent, it's understandable. But I've said this in a previous video, and I'm going to expand on it a little bit here. But in my view, Errol Spence is potentially the new Marvin Hagler. Now, Marvin Hagler was a middleweight. Errol Spence is a welterweight. So they're two weight divisions apart. But a lot of Spence reminds me of Hagler from his style, from his attributes, to his attitude and his confidence. Errol Spence, stylistically, for example, is a southpaw like Hagler, although he don't switch it. Hagler used to switch it quite a lot. Spence is more just a conventional southpaw. But he's very methodical, like Marvin Hagler was. Hagler wasn't an out-and-out -out pressure fighter, but he could apply pressure when he wanted to. He could also box when he wanted to. Against Tommy Hearns, he was applying out-and-out -out pressure. But against a lot of other fighters, it was more of a boxing match, like against Roberto Duran, for example. Errol Spence is similar. You saw it in a Kell Brook fight. He boxed in spots and he applied pressure in spots. Very Marvin Hagler-esque. Hagler was a guy who, yeah, he was a good puncher. And he certainly wasn't slow. But he never really blew you away. And I'm talking about in terms of being impressed as a spectator. He certainly never blew me away with any of his physical gifts. His hand speed never blew me away. His punching power never blew me away. It was good punching power, decent hand speed, but nothing spectacular, nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary. And it's the same with Errol Spence. Hagler had this methodical way of working, this methodical way of throwing punches, this methodical way of breaking down opponents. And Spence has the same thing. It's all very methodical. It's not that explosive, actually. It's a methodical, professional, relentless approach that both Marvin Hagler and Errol Spence both have. I'm not saying that Errol Spence is going to go on to be anywhere near as successful as Marvin Hagler. I'm not saying he won't either. It's far too early to say that. But... I really do see a lot of similarities between the two guys. And maybe when I'm making this comparison, it will be a little more palatable to some people because of the fact that they are not two fighters in the same weight division. But, you know, even the attitude of Spence, he has a blue collar attitude to boxing. He's not one of these guys who is a prima donna like an Adrian Broner, a guy who's really more interested in the fame. Errol Spence has this kind of understated yet extremely confident aura and attitude about him. He's all business, same as Marvin Hagler. He's not interested in the glitz and glamour of the whole thing. He's interested in coming there and breaking you to pieces in a boxing ring. That's where he feels most at home. That's where he feels most driven. It seems. And that's how Hagler was. That's the same kind of vibe I get from Spence. I get that Marvin Hagler vibe. That blue collar, gritty, hard working, 100% professionalism. I've had that from day dot from Spence. You know, that's the impression I've got. Not being impressed at all. As a young professional going in there, sparring the likes of Adrian Broner and Mayweather and all these other guys, not starstruck, not overly respectful, nothing. He's trying to put it on those guys as soon as he got in the ring with them. So yeah, I'll stop the video here. Just some food for thought. Those of you guys, you know, those of you who were not too familiar with Marvin Hagler, maybe you were not into boxing back then. Maybe it was just before your time. Maybe some of you weren't even born when Hagler was still fighting. So for those of you who are not too familiar, I suggest you should go and watch some Marvin Hagler 
and see what you think. Does he remind you in some ways of Errol Spence? Go watch Marvin Hagler against Vito Antofermo or Marvin Hagler against Alan Minter. Watch him against Tommy Hearns. You know, go, go, go watch a few of his fights. Roberto Duran, John the Beast Mugabe. And maybe you'll see what I'm saying in terms of Errol Spence being similar. Stylistically, in terms of his attitude, his attributes. You know, Spence, not a guy who blows me away with speed or power or anything like that. Decent speed, decent power. But it's the combination of him doing everything fairly well along with this extraordinary will to win and self-confidence that he has. That's what's extraordinary about Spence. You know, he's got a good chin, he's shoulder in the Kell Brook fight. He's got, you know, decent power, decent speed, good solid fundamentals all round, can box, can apply pressure. But what's extraordinary about him is his confidence and his attitude. That's what's extraordinary. And that's what takes someone who is otherwise physically Fairly gifted, but nothing out of the ordinary. That's what elevates him to be something special, is the attitude that he has. And if he can maintain that attitude, then you never know. Maybe he will go on to emulate the achievements of a Marvin Hagler. Not a middleweight, perhaps, but maybe welterweight, light middleweight. Eventually, maybe move up to middleweight, but it's hard to imagine somebody like Errol Spence dominating at middleweight the way Hagler did because he's just not naturally that big. Uh, at least not in today's context. I mean, back in the days of Marvin Hagler, they were still weighing people on the day of the fight. So, you know, perhaps back then Errol Spence would have been a middleweight, but today he's a welterweight. So it's hard to imagine him in today's context going up to middleweight and dominating that division. But you never know. So, yeah, it's uh, two fighters from two different weight classes, but I can't help but see a lot of similarities. Let me know what you feel about everything I talked about in this video. It's happening, I'm out.